All right, everybody, welcome to Tuesday Night Workshop, Monarch Family Chiropractic. I'm Dr. Kristen Zawada. If any of you new are joining, I believe we have our pretty dedicated crew. So um, we are going to get started. Um, we're going to talk tonight with the workshop being on proactive health. And it's really about knowing kind of where you are in the spectrum of health. And so we're gonna use this engagement spectrum that we use in life and in coaching and in all things. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so you can see more of the whole, whole picture um, to discuss how engaged are we in life? How engaged are we in our care? Um, how engaged are we in our relationships? How engaged um, are we in just some of our other maybe disciplines of, of life? Um, you can take this in any, in any and every way in which we view health and in which we view engaging in life. And I'm going to turn this to Miss Laura so you can, you get to see this one or they're on the table there, my dear. Oh, sorry guys. Um, so when we talk about engagement, we talk through the spectrum almost like you do this the rainbow of colors. And really what that means for someone, if they've ever done any energy work or talked about learning kind of what chakra colors are, um, this may resonate with you that way when we know what um, energy and vibration uh, and happen when they're in this, in this kind of exact hue or color scheme. So our um, docs that we train with have put this together and trying to make a visual for understanding, engaging and how we engage in life. So um, this is usually the spectrum that we start seeing people, which is maybe in a crisis driven place. Um, so I'm gonna really re reference this as it has to do with chiropractic, but um, you can really apply this to, like I said, all the different facets of health and of life and how we engage in, our, in all of our things. Um, so many times, in the office, someone's starting in a place of panic and a place of maybe fear, a place of crisis-driven action. And that is that they're either in pain or um, there's something you know, not right in their world. And it's about, about that immediate um, attention to correct or fix or change something. Um, so that really is where we fall into that red category or that hue of color of really intense energy. So I'm gonna drop this down because I almost like the icons better <laughs> that we use in this picture. So it really is when we're in that red area, red is a very um, kind of frantic color and used in, in a sense if there's been a tragedy. Um, something that is engaging again, like in that short term, respond to a crisis. How can I change this as fast as I can? into something different. And for patients in the office, it's usually really like, okay, I, I love that there's other things I'm gonna get out of this office. And right now, can we get out of pain? Like right now I'm working on this, this pain thing that I can't do anything because of. Something that's very interesting in someone that stays in this mindset is, is um, usually a lot of yo-yoing, right? They're, they're, if they're crisis driven, then when the crisis resolves somewhat or lessens in its intensity, then their need or desire to change it goes away. And it can be the person who really comes and goes at, in their care, comes and goes in trying to make a change, but doesn't stick with it um, until it becomes a crisis again. So somebody that's in a sense in that immediate response to whatever driven. Um, something that was interesting was when you survey people that were in and involved and in, in just in the world that even had to do around 9-11, um, they saw lots of changes in people's responses to engaging in their life after 9-11 happened, something so tragic. Um, and for many people, the response they took in, I'm going to now do something different because holy cow, in an instant life can change, um, did that for maybe a short period of time of weeks to a month. And then you start to see those trends trickle off. So that is someone who is sitting in the crisis driven, in a sense, um, self-engaged category, living in the moment. What's unfortunate in the health world that we see that falls in this category is sometimes people who have um, had a heart condition or sometimes need like that, you know, single 
double quadruple bypass surgery where they don't know all that's happening in their body. And then it drastically comes to, this is what you're gonna have to do to continue to live. We're gonna have to go in and do this massive procedure. And I think they have a lot of what I call come to Jesus moments, right? Um, they're like, oh my gosh, I gotta take better care of my health. I have to eat different. I have to do some exercise. I have to you know, work my heart muscle. I have to do things to keep my body, brain, systems healthy and functioning. Um, because I could die from this, right? And so they go through this massive rehab and surgery. And usually once rehab is over, there's a statistic that about 70 to 80% of people who have done bypass surgeries um, and get through recovery, then within five to seven years are back in a scenario and revert back to no exercise, poor diet, um, and all the things that got them there to begin with. So it's just interesting how fast we lose kind of um, the appreciation sometimes for health and life if we stay living in that crisis world. So the next engagement as we move up the spectrum into uh, more engagement or enlightenment, if you will, is um, maybe being non-responsive, but aware. So this is the person, and as you get into that yellow hue or orange to yellow hue, that is more like, oh, I know this is happening. Okay, um, I'm aware of this, but I'm still not really responsive to it. So, and again, kind of like, oh, once you feel good, Jen doesn't really understand understands that there's a need to do more that doesn't necessarily do more stick with more um the next spectrum in the path here if you will that is again more sitting into that yellow is when there's more of a, a understanding and more of knowledge behind the understanding so the non-responsive is more of that okay i'm aware that it's there and i understand what you're telling me i should do different doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to do it um, maybe waits for a more opportune time or, or has maybe the excuses of, I don't have enough time to make a change or to do something about it now, but I'm aware it's there. The mechanistic um, is the educated. That's the person saying, okay, um, as you get into that green, that I've got the knowledge. Um, I realize the what and the why something has happened um, and that I should do more than just say, get out of pain or deal with the crisis and does more um, they desire for more. They have that more education of the understanding again of the why behind it. Why I'm in the situation is how I got there and that I don't want to revert back there. Um, and yet it kind of stays more mechanistic. Um, the best way I can describe that in our, I feel like in our world is that when someone just relates their health to only say maybe the nerve chart or the pain and that this controls this, which creates this. And again, it's just very mechanistic. So even the nerve chart behind me there, um, when we look at the, someone's very just kind of in their head with where their engagement is in the process. Um, it's not a, at all a bad place to be. It's a place that's just as along the path, maybe not necessarily taking it past themselves and their health, but it is being more educated, doing things um, not just because of a crisis situation, um, but maybe just staying more into, aha, I have this knowledge and I'm using this knowledge. And so the next engagement is that you're really taking that somewhere else. So the transformation um, category and then up to the inspired is really more, okay, I've got that transformation is I'm educated in this information or I'm educated in what needs to happen. I'm making steps to make changes and putting things in place for the long term, the longevity of my health, the longevity of my relationship, the longevity of my financial outlook, um, all those things that are more of, mm, okay, when I notice something's not right, I, I know I need to add in or do more. Um, the best example I can come up with lately was there was a couple patients um, who were traveling and um, came to us before we actually came to them with the thought of, let's get in some additional visits before you do this two week trip and understood that who I want to kind of, I want to not only get to a, a, a more functioning state with just my mobility, but knowing where it was taking them kind of rising up and addressing, supporting their immune system and doing more for themselves ahead of the game than before this two week trip, than waiting to see how it was when they got back. Um, Another one I can think of is, you know, having some patients who have said, oh, 
I am around sick grandkids. Um, I'm not feeling my best. I'm scheduling an extra visit. Like I'm coming another time this week. Um, and similar, you know, components around that doesn't have to just be, I guess, obviously around your health, but in how it, how we engage with you here, that's the kind of things we see people when they're in more of that transformative state um, is that I know I need to do something different or want to add something in. This is also um, when I call like getting into that educated into the transformation is when people are looking at the bigger picture, like I was referencing. So meaning, okay, I've got these pillars of health. If we're going to talk about it from the health perspective. And that may mean I'm doing um, the part that is for my nervous system and the function of my body and my brain with their chiropractic care, but they are addressing a sleep issue and or addressing a nutritional concern or issue or maybe lack thereof. Um, it's when they're tapping into, and then say the exercise or some form of movement or adding in something um, that they realize de-stresses their nervous system. We've been talking a lot about the vagus nerve the last month or two, and there's some great um, uh, workshops recorded that um, Doc did, I believe it was back in early June or maybe May, where we were addressing uh, the polyvagal tone and nerve. So if you're someone who wants to tackle where stress or other things come in, to your life and tend to take over or tend to um, don't get as much of attention for bringing us into balance of our, our fight or flight, go, 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 deal with the stressful environment or work or situation, and then tap into um, the calmer part of our nervous system and how to keep those more in check, the polyvagal nerve and any kind of exercises and breathing work that we can do around that is huge for transforming how our nervous system is functioning and how we are kind of more engaging um, one side of it and not letting the other side kind of dominate, if you will. So when you're tapping into things like that, you're, you're going full circle and kind of into full spectrum, truly of overall pillars of health, that it's not any one thing. Um, so that where I would, that's where I could say add extra. It's not like necessarily just add extra of the one thing you're doing. It might be, I'm doing all these things. Well, what's the next little phase of health and vitality that I'm Going to put some attention to. Um, so that's that piece. And as we get into inspired, really getting into that indigo color where we know that the vibration that comes off that energy is um, someone who really kind of views um, connection, if you will, at a higher level. Um, that's where they're doing their pieces. And then they're like, oh, who else doesn't know what I know? Who else isn't doing? What I'm doing, who else in my circle is um, maybe not as connected to their world, to their um, environment, to their health as they could be. So this is more when you're doing your pieces and you want to connect your loved ones, your community in better health or in better, a higher center of anything. Um, so this would be where um, we have patients that are like, you know, my spouse doesn't know it yet, but they're coming in here. Or um, when's your next patient appreciation week? Because, you know, my boyfriend or my so-and-so or my whatever, I'm going to have them come in then and get to meet you and, you know, start their health journey and start the process and at least see what you guys are about. Um, it's when we're really looking out for the bigger picture in our community and the people that we are connected to. Because um, ultimately, it's kind of that setting, um, not just setting goals, but setting an expectation for um, a better people in your world, better people in our community. Um, a lot of times we saw peaks and heightened um, oh, engagement of this when we had um, tragedies happen. You know, 9-11 is a huge tragedy. Um, with certain things, I believe with COVID, we saw that as well. Um, but people wanting to reach out and connect that way versus kind of more just um, become introverted and, and in a sense, concern themselves just with their world and their circle. I think this was about looking at like in an instance like that with the pandemic, how do we reach more people with whatever that is, you know, with the right information, with connecting them to what's going to support them and their 
their well-being. Um, and we see people trying to, you know, take those things further into their circles. So that's really when you're at that level um, and you have that knowledge and then people are seeing that, I don't just know that, um, I, I do it, right? I live, I guess I, I walk the, you know, my talk. And so with that, <clears throat> um, I think that's where we see, you know, generations that we want to impact in a bigger way. And it may start, you know, with spouses, kids, siblings, um, and that may then hopefully branch out to people like our neighbors or our coworkers or people who were around that we see could be lifted up. So um, we had an emotional day here at the office, <laughs> at least I did. So you're seeing um, a little bit of that come out now as we're connecting with you guys in our community. Um, so know that they are, <clears throat> they are tears of joy, they are tears of happiness. Um, and it's just great when we get to see uh, this level of, oh, thank you, Ms. Lori, that this level of inspiration happen within the practice. So it was um, a great topic to deliver tonight. It was quite uh, perfect for some things that have been happening in the practice this week. So I apologize for um, the tears, but know that they are uh, tears of excitement for changes and transformation that's happening within our space and our amazing patients. Um, so uh, that is how we wanted to share the engagement spectrum with you today. Ooh, and wanted to really have you then maybe reflect on who are those people? Who are those people um, in your world who maybe, well, I guess I would just think about people in your world. And then I would think about where does each one of them fall in this spectrum? And it may be related to their health and it may be related to something um, seemingly, you know, completely different. Overall, it all overlaps. As we know, everything's connected to everything. Um, and so I would say, look at where your um, key circle falls in this spectrum with things. Um, and that may not only enlighten with you and how maybe you can help them or support them in where they're at, but it might just bring some really good awareness to how to communicate with them. Um, and understanding the spectrum and, <clears throat> excuse me, where they're at um, might really help in wherever stage they're at, supporting them there. Because everybody starts somewhere. And once in a while, we have a patient come in that's much further along the spectrum because they've either had to care somewhere else as far as how it relates to us, or they've been under in some other realm at a much higher level of engagement in their life. So then when it comes to engaging their health in that way, it makes sense to them and they're, they're, they're right on board and they move right up that spectrum or they're already up that spectrum because this level of things makes sense to them because they're already doing it in some other fashion of their life or in their health. Um, so I think it's a matter of just looking at how, who can we support, maybe understanding where they're at in, the, in that um, level of engaging or not and um, figuring out how to help them along the way. Um, and then I think it, it's always worth after kind of assessing what your, what your circle is or who you're around. Where do you feel like you fall in these categories? And that may be that it's um, in relation to your health. I mean, for most of you that are on here, um, it's kind of a no brainer. You know, there's not people that are engaging in their health um, as much as they should be. And those of you that are on the calls are doing that extra, right? You're doing that spot, spot to be educated, to understand and to get on the other side of that middle, middle of the spectrum. Um, and for that, we applaud you. And we love that you're here engaging in those things. So hopefully this gave you some insight to where you're at and maybe more so where other people in your world are at too with their health or with other things. And if there's anything we can do to support not just your transformation, but others, that's why we do what we do. And that's what drives us every day in this office. Um, and gets to have, you know, gets to, to uh, 
give us these emotional, <laughs> awesome um, moments with our patients like we've had today. And um, actually oh, all month, it's been quite, it's been quite awesome to see. So in sharing that with others, um, I hope that understanding maybe some different piece of where, where uh, the spectrum falls for you might enlighten you to share more with others and let us know if we can support you in any way in doing that. And if there's anybody that wants to pop in and share anything about where they feel like they're at in the spectrum or where they um, noticed maybe, just maybe brought to light where someone else in their world is, um, this can definitely be something that is challenging to be in a different spectrum than the people around you, you know? So sometimes this is what makes it challenging for people when you realize sometimes who you're with isn't in the same uh, engagement level you are, right? And as we all grow and change, that develops with us. And for some, it does. And for others, it doesn't. And I think that ends up making who our, who our circle is. So I'm going to pause recording here. I appreciate all of you for joining us. And I'd like to rather open it up once I stop the recording. And anybody that wants to chat and engage further about this or anything that this brought to light for them, I would love to hear it. Oops.